Hello, this is Mr. Doro. This little video is going to be about gas calculations, and we're going to show a method that you can put in a, a box called an initial final effect box, or an IFE box. And we're also going to look at particle diagrams and how we can draw those for the changes in these gases. So here we go. Well, one of the first things that we need to know in order to do these calculations is the variable relationships. We did a lot of these in lab, and these graphs should look familiar to you, and you should know how these graphs work. Look at this pressure versus volume. We saw that as the pressure went down, the volume went up. So as pressure is going down, our volume is going up by the same factor, and that's called a inverse relationship or an inverse relationship and so we need to make sure that we know that every time that's how pressure and volume are related for pressure versus temperature you see that we have the direct relationship on a graph this is a Kelvin temperature scale and remember if it were Celsius then it would not go through the origin right there it hit at negative 273 Celsius and so this is a pressure and as pressure goes up the temperature is also going to go up they have a direct relationship the next one the pressure and number of particles same thing as you add more particles the pressure is going to go up also that's a direct relationship and we can uh, surmise that volume versus temperature even though we didn't graph in lab as the temperature goes up we know because of thermal expansion the volume is also going to go up too so that is a direct relationship we need to make sure that we know each one of these here because these are vitally important in order to get our calculations set up right okay so here's a typical problem that we might have it's a contained gas has a pressure of 132 13.2 kilopascals at 215 milliliters what's the new pressure when the container expands to 292 milliliters so we write down what we know in here Kilopascals is a unit of pressure, and that's what we start out with. So I'm going to write 113.2 kPa in here. This is an IFE chart, initial, final, effect. And so easy to make one of these up, but a lot of times that you'll see them. But sometimes if you don't, you just draw the chart right in there. And then our initial volume is 215 to 15 milliliters. I'm putting the units right in there too and it expands to 292 milliliters. And so the temperature and number of particles, it doesn't say anything about those. So I'm gonna assume that they are count constant and so they're not gonna change. So what I have to do is I look at the what the volume did. And when I look from 215 to 292, the volume went up. And so then if the volume is going up, I'm gonna see what that does to my pressure. My Volume and pressure have an inverse relationship, so as the volume goes up, the pressure is going to go down because there's not going to be as many collisions with the particles there. So now I know that whatever I multiply this 113.2 by right here, then this is going to be, I have to multiply by a fraction that will make this go down. I know this one's going up, but we already see this is going up. So this has got to go down. So I'm going to put it in like this. I start out with what I was given that's alone, 113.2 kPa. And I'm going to multiply it by a factor. And that factor is going to be these two. But remember, I have to multiply it by the factor to make this one go down. And so to make it go down, I have to put the smaller one on top, the 215 milliliters on top, 215 milliliters over 292 milliliters. That's a 2 milliliters. And then milliliters are going to cancel out. I put equals. I take this number right here, the 113, multiply by everything on top, divide by everything on bottom, and I get 83.34931511, something like that. And the correct number is sig figs. It is going to be 83.3 kPa. And notice this did go down. I can write it right up here, 83.3 kPa. I do like a box around my answer right down there. And then if we look at this, we can draw a particle diagram for before and after. Now we want to make sure our particle diagram is proportional though. And so if we look at the change right here for the volume, that we went from 215 before and up to 292. So it got bigger, but we want to see about how much bigger. Well, that went up by like uh, 77 milliliters or so. 77 out of 215, that's um, not quite half. It's somewhere maybe around you know 30 to 40 percent. So I'm going to try to draw this about proportional here. Before, I want to be smaller. And then I want this to be bigger on uh, this over one here after. And then I'm going to draw the same number of particles in each one 
Oopsie, those are supposed to be circles. I'm going to draw four of them. One, two, three, four. Those particles are moving at the same speed also because the temperature didn't change. So I'm going to draw arrows, and those arrows I'm going to try to draw all the same size. And then we're going to see if it makes sense or not. Oops, that one's a little long. But if those arrows are all about the same size, we got to see, well, would the pressure really go down when you went from before to after? And when you look at it, you say, well, yeah, this is going to have less collisions because it's got a bigger space. So that looks like it might work. And you might even want to say, you know, that this is around 30 to 40 percent bigger, somewhere in there. And you could actually find the real percentage if you wanted to, but I just like you to be in the ballpark. So that's how we do particle diagrams for those. Okay, so here we have a longer problem, and I'm just going to start by filling this stuff in here. I'm going to try to use different colors as I can here. And so our number of puffs is 38.0 puffs, and that's our number of particles. And so our volume is 95.2 centimeters cubed, because that's a unit for volume. Our temperature is, well, let's go to our pressure, 788. 0 0.0 millimeters of mercury and then our temperature is 38 degrees celsius which i'm going to change to kelvin right away by adding 273 to it so that's 311 kelvin so that goes right in here 311 kelvin and it says what would the volume of the gas at stp that's standard temperature and pressure standard pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and standard temperature is 273 kelvin and so as I go through, I'm going to see how each of these change. Oh, by the way, it's constant particles, so I don't need to, that doesn't bother it at all. It doesn't affect it. So as I look at this, the temperature is going down from 311 to 273. And so that goes down. Temperature and volume have a direct relationship, so that's going to make the volume go down. Pressure also goes down, but pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. So as the pressure goes down, it's going to make the volume go up interesting okay so we're going to start out by doing our math we start out with the one that we have all alone 95.2 centimeters cube and then we're going to multiply it by factors and so the temperature factor made it go down and so i need to use because this one made it go down i need to use the ratio on this to make it go down and so that ratio would be the smaller number on top 273 kelvin over 311 Kelvin, and so I've taken care of that one. And then I need to use the ratio on this next one, the pressure, to make it go up again. And so to make it go up, I need to use the bigger one on top. And so as I put the bigger one on top, 788.0 millimeters over 760 millimeters, and that's an exact number right there. And then I can just multiply these out. And for my answer, I got 86.6466 something or other. It should be in three sig figs. That's my lowest number that I had. So this is 86.6, and that is centimeters cubed. That would be a, a box around that one. We would put it up here, and then we can see when we do this that the volume overall went down, so the bigger effect was from the temperature. The pressure did affect it, but the biggest effect was from the temperature. So let's do a um, particle diagram on this. So I always look at the volume first of all, because I wanna know how big to draw my boxes. And when I see this, the volume went down. It went from 95 to 86, that's a change of around nine. Around nine out of the 95 original there, that would mean it went down by about 10%. So I don't wanna draw all that much smaller, but I do wanna try, try to draw it smaller. And so this is around 10% smaller. I'm just gonna put that in there. The number of particles didn't change, and we had 38 puffs, but I'm not drawing 38 in there. So I'm just gonna draw you know, three, because that's easier. And then uh, the temperature also went down, and so I have to draw the temperature getting lower. Lower by about, um, let's see, it was about 30-something, almost 40 out of 311, so a little over 10%. And so I'm going to draw those on there. The temperature was bigger here than it was longer arrows than it is here. And I'm trying to draw those around 10%, but again, I can't tell all that well, so I may have to draw a little line in there and say around 10% smaller. 
in there and the pressure just takes care of itself when you have it in there so that's how you do these particle diagrams for multiple things so if you'd like to try some of these out I've given you a couple problems that you can set up the IFE boxes and then you can do the particle diagram boxes also for before and after and give them a shot if that's what you want to do alright have a great day bye bye